Well, hmm. I never expected you to complete that task. What can I say? Old gypsies usually have the best information. Hello, sir. Yeah? Frederick I am. Named after my father, Frederick. Who was named after his father, Frederick? Who was named after his father, Serdorf? I love living free here on the grasslands of Lunaria. To me, there's no finer, no freer area. We have the King's Road running through it, yet plenty of wide open space to hunt, fish, gather, live a life. He's a good boy. I'd be lost without his help. There's been a few. In fact, my old friend Hummel was a settler. He had a cottage south of here. The ruins of it are still there. No one's had the heart to tear it down. Good man. Moved here many years ago with his wife and young son and built themselves a home out on the grasslands. I didn't know where they came from, and Hummel was reticent to talk about it. But he was a really friendly and helpful guy. He knew all kinds of fascinating stories. You meet a lot of different folks, living as we do. But the Hummels were one of a kind. They often broke bread with us, but mostly they kept to themselves in their cabin. Didn't venture out too much, except to hunt or fish with me. He was my best friend. We used to hunt and fish. Shame about his death, truly. It still haunts me a bit. We were hunting in the North Woods, you know. It's kind of spooky in there. But we were doing fine, when all of a sudden he got spooked and started mumbling the craziest things. We were near the burnt-down ruins of the old Killington Mansion, and whatever he saw in there, well, he turned pale at the sight of the place. Next thing I know, he said, I can't be here, and run off. We all ran off to find him, but it was like the forest swallowed him, and we're all experienced woodsmen here. Well, when we found him, it wasn't pretty. He got mauled by a bear, or worse. Truth is, no one knows. We found his body in a clearing in the North Woods, but there was nothing around but his mangled body. No tracks or nothing. Well, we did what we could. We took in his wife and son, and they lived with us for many years. When Mrs. Hummel died, we buried her next to him, in graves outside their old homestead. Their son stayed and lived with us for a time, but eventually he moved on. Well, his boy actually took a job being the caretaker of the King's Bridge that crosses the Great River. He lives in a little cabin up there next to the King's Bridge. It's just a bit north of here. Jarrett is his name. It doesn't get too many visitors up there, especially now with the Great Bridge being washed out. May they rest in peace, that poor family. They all died in a horrible fire that consumed their mansion, oh, near half a century ago. They were a good family. But the rumor was that the father, Jarvis, came home from some trip as mad as a loon. They said he stole a gem from the Sentai, which is something a real fool would do. Well, then again, they often say the rich are fools. Wealthy fools, but fools nonetheless. People say the gem, the Eye of Yaga, is still somewhere in the old ruins. But I think they're crazy. If there was anything left in that mansion, it was picked clean long ago. They were good people. They were just looking to start over. He was a good friend. He used to tell me things. Things he'd never tell anyone else. I kept my promise to him, though. I made sure to keep his secrets safe in stone. Oh, I've already said too much, I think. Good boy.
You could feel something was amiss when you got here. You prepare for combat. Shut on, hostile too. They are storm. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. You have a feeling of pride surge within you at your victory. Nice job. Searching the corpse reveals some blies, which you pocket. Ah, hello Mr. Roham. Come, come, you need to enjoy a good smoke after defeating such a blowhard as Gorth. Hello again, young master. Welcome to my shop. Well, this is my humble little shop. I've been all over the world, but I have found myself enjoying this valley very much. Plus, I get clientele from all over the world who come to sample my blends. The port ships in much of my leave, all of which I have found myself during my travels. I have personally set up the shipping and delivery of each item. Plus, it's a lovely city to visit when I have time. He has been most kind to me, and he protects my interests. Ah, back there is the gentleman's smoking room. When it is free, you may go back and smoke at your leisure. I have designed it to make one feel as if they are transported to a different land. It is a fine plant, if properly cured and treated. It is the most wondrous way to spend your leisure time. I stay away from such drugs. They have been known to cause wars in other countries. What a sweet town, is it not? A fine place for a man like me to live. Quiet, out of the way, yet if I need to travel, many options are open to me. With the bridge out, it is difficult to go north, but I always have the port of Tyr to take me many places. You have purchased a smoking pipe. You have purchased some Jundarian leaf tobacco. Armand has two paintings hanging in his shop. On closer inspection, the plaques underneath them say Chong and the other says Cheech. There's a large red velvet curtain in the back. You imagine that's where he keeps his rancor. You can't go through the curtain. It would reveal the great and powerful Oz.
kill, pillage and destroy. That's all you think about, isn't it? It's the necklace Kayana gave you. Besides being made of gold and diamonds, she claimed it could help you find one of the pieces. You put the necklace on, carefully hiding it under your shirt in case someone thinks you're a sissy. You can hear strange music, almost as if it's in your head, but it's almost as if it's coming from the necklace too. You feel a warm, tingling sensation coming from the necklace you're wearing. You like it. It's almost as if the necklace was drawn to something here. You take your necklace out from under your shirt and place it on the large rock. The rock has opened up to reveal a tomb of sorts. Inside the tomb is a skeleton. You assume he's the old Sentai priest. He's holding a piece of the Killington seal and a letter. You take both. The tomb begins to close on its own, sealing the Sentai priest inside for the rest of his slumber. You wish you had left him a pillow. You open the letter and read it. You pull out your trusty rope and climb down to the banks below. Water flows majestically down the side of this mountain. Looking closely, you can almost make out something behind the waterfall, although it could simply be a trick of the light. You plow through the waterfall and find yourself in a cave. Wiping the water from your eyes, you squint and see a knoll standing on top of a pile of treasure. He doesn't seem really excited or happy to see you. Now, what the hell do you want? Well, I was just looking for some beauty tips. Can you help me? Eat every part of my ass, human. Seriously, it was nice to see someone else in here for a moment, but if you don't leave in the next 60 seconds, I will remove your head. 
You stow your climbing kit in your backpack. Man, that was fun. This massive pile of treasure looks mighty tempting, but unfortunately, there is a knoll sitting on top of it. You can see a few items of great rarity amongst the treasures, such as Aladdin's lamp, the magic mirror of Daventry, the flying carpet of Abdullah Du, and the magic bong of Blackthorn. It's a cave, you fool! It's behind a waterfall, so people don't disturb me! Obviously, you didn't get the hint. Well, uh, I'm, I'm fine, thank you. Uh, I'm a bit bored. I mean, I just sit here. But you know, a gold treasure hoard is everything. I just wish I had something to do while I sit here. Anyway, it's not like you give a millimeter of mouse poop about my problems. My name? Not that you care, but it's Gary. Gary Gnoll? I prefer Gary the Knoll, thank you. It's mine. I've collected it, and I've sat here guarding it for over 20 years, and I will seriously kill you until you die from it, if you try to take any of it. Oh yeah, you know I did find something like that. Piece of junk. You're still not getting it, so go! Go! You better get out of here quickly, or I'm not responsible for what happens to you. This guy really needs to mellow out. Ah, don't come back! Hey, have this pipe. Oh, thanks, I guess. So what am I supposed to do with an empty pipe? Hey look man, you need to relax. You've been alone and a pile of treasure for too long. Here, have this tobacco. Well, I suppose I could indulge a little. The Gnoll takes the pipe and ignites it. He takes in small, enjoyable puffs. The aroma of fine tobacco spreads through the room, and he seems, well, happier. Damn, man. You know, that was just what I needed. Hey, no problem. Here, I want you to have this. It's obvious you need it. I know. It's not worth anything. And I'm never going to leave here to use it anyway. Do you see that, Noll? He'd kick your ass if you even tried to take some of that treasure. You already got what you wanted here. Better not push your luck. Oh crap! You slipped on the wet edge. Stupid Noor. Nothing like a good climb, eh?
there's a sturdy well near the apple trees. It seems a little too dark down the well. Perhaps this would be a better idea in the daytime. Those apples seem to have gone bad. You should try to get a fresh one some other time. Ah, the old comfy bed. You decide to lie down. You sleep until the morning and wake up with the daylight. It's now morning. You're starving. You should go downstairs and get some breakfast from Ina. You sit down at the table. Here's your meal, Mr. Roem, sir. Looks lovely. Thank you, dear. You wolf down all the food and give a proper belch. There's a sturdy well near the apple trees. You grab the rope and climb down the well. It's an underground stream of cool, refreshing water that's bubbled up here. You can see the mark of the sentai on here. This must be the place. The necklace tingles and suddenly you realize there is no wall in front of you. And you see a pedestal with several curious pieces on it. This is the symbol of the sentai. You appear to be on the right track. Good for you. This is an odd pedestal. There are 14 carved statues on the top. It reminds you of a game you saw in a tavern once.
As you place the final peg, a small drawer opens to reveal a small key. You quickly grab the key and close the drawer. You grab the rope and climb back up. You could feel something was amiss when you got here. You prepare for combat. They are storm. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Whoa. Shut on, hostile two. Whoa. That was a display of mastery and skill. Searching the corpse reveals some blies, which you pocket. You also found a healing potion, which you gladly take. At first glance, it looks just like an ordinary stone door, but when you really gaze at it, there seems to be something different about it. Looking closer, you see a shallow indentation on the door in the shape of a shield. The four pieces slide together to form the complete seal. You placed the crest firmly into the crypt door. You could feel a weird energy flowing as you placed it. Now you just need a key to use in the lock on the seal. This is the key to the Killington family crypt. Awesome, eh? You use the old crypt key on the lock now on the door. It turns and you begin to hear a massive sound. The door is now open. Holy crap!
who are underground and inside the crypt of the Killington family. Besides the large sarcophagus in the centre of the room, you also see four statues along the back wall, in addition to the many other trinkets and treasures around the room. You notice a plaque on the outside of the sarcophagus, 